I just received uh, my Auto MD802 uh, Elite All Systems Pro DS. It comes with one year's uh, free updates. Um, and let's just open it up and see what we have. book and a disc manual your book and your in the 802 And it's got it's the European software edition, so uh, it's not uh, for the US market, but I'm sure it would work on some of their cars. Uh, as you can see, it does say OBD2, which is the American uh, uh, what they call it. Uh, we call it EOBD, and uh, we get a. Uh, USB cable. It also comes complete with a SD card and it's a 4 gigabyte uh, in size. I don't know if it'll take a larger size uh, SD card. But uh, now I'm going to go to the car and do a bit of uh, playing around with it and see what I come up with. I've used this in my car. Uh, and there's no problem connecting, it connects to the OBD and uh, the Nissan scan mode. Um, the next thing we have to do then is update the uh, software on the uh, scan tool. And you do this by uh, getting your SD card and uh, installing your software there is a update tool on this software and when you install this update tool it w doesn't work this um, brings you to an old website that's no longer used as far as I know what you have to do is go to the Autel website and um, autotech.com website and register your your device you have a uh, password inside uh, they'll be looking for and the serial number you'll be looking for the serial number the serial number is on the back but if that wears off it's also built into uh, the uh, the uh, scan tool as well so right we'll just go to the uh, hotel website and I'll show you what uh, is there this is what you will get when you uh, register your device you will have um, an account and you will be after setting up your devices now if I go in here my device and um, it shows you uh, what you have manage device and it'll show you your uh, what you actually have now You've got to download your PC suite, and this is it here. You download that and install it on your PC, and then you will be able to do updates. Um, it will be using your uh, username and your user ID and password from your aut from the Autel website. So just remember that. That's what you're going to have to use when you uh, when you install that PC suite. This is the card out of the uh, scanner. It's a four gig uh, card. It would be a good idea to copy the contents of this onto your laptop. Make a backup copy of it if anything goes wrong. It did happen to me. Uh, my original version of this uh, did connect up okay to um, the Nissan um, software no problem the Nissan scan software no problem 
but when I updated it with all the all the major updates that, that uh, you 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 can select um, the live data, it wouldn't connect to live data with uh, Nissan version uh, 2.2. If I brought uh, this, uh, I'll show you what you can do. I'm not going to. Uh, I got another uh, SD card here. Uh, it's only a two gig, but I'm going to just install a few bits of software on this to to show you how to do it. Here's my auto uh, update software that I've uh, downloaded from uh, the auto tech uh, website. Click on it. Okay, I have a blank SD card in. I started up my uh, auto update software and uh, this is what you have to install first. You have to install the system software for the scanner to work. You can select different versions of it. Uh, 3.20 and 4.10. 4 My original version was version 3.00. Uh, I haven't got the option to go back to 3.00. To see would I be able to get my Nissan software to uh, communicate correctly. Anyway, we'll install this first. Is click on install, downloads it, and it automatically installs it for you. And now it's going to show you um, updates, the latest updates for each uh, uh, manufacturer. I'm going to select uh, Daewoo and say Lexus. And I'm going to do Nissan as well because that's where the problem arises. Uh, you can select what version you want um, to install. I found version 2.2 will not work um, on the Nissan Almero for some reason or another. I had to back uh, downgrade it to version 2.10. But when you do that, you will have uh, reduced live data. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't have the same amount of data as I had originally with version uh, system uh, version 3.00. Okay, now. I'm just going to uh, update selected items and what it's doing now it's downloading them. The update is complete and you click up here and you'll see what programs you actually have installed on your SD card. You can in uninstall any of them you want, or the whole lot of them. You can click on them all and get rid of the whole lot of them uh, anytime you want. Uh, as you can see there, I got Nissan version 2.2. This would not work on uh, uh, the Nissan Almira I have outside here. I would have to uninstall that, uninstall that and reinstall version 2.10. I'm just going to exit out that program. Yeah, put the SD card in the unit, go on the new program. Uh, you've got then your USB cable. USB up to the uh, laptop and the unit will power up. Okay. I didn't install EOBD or the OBD scanner on it, so that's not on it. I could have done that. And 
see. Here's the models we installed. Um, go into Lexus. Of course I'm not connected to a car so I'm not going to be able to view live that on this. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to power the unit down and what the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, do a bit in the, uh, connected to a car. I have the scanner connected to the uh, OBD port and the first thing we're going to do is have a look at a few of the functions here in the OBD scan mode. Um, just going to go into that, press the OK button. You can see it scanning away. Trying to find the right protocol for connection. And it has found no problems, no diagnostic uh, codes. Uh, press the OK button. Now you have uh, uh, different options here system status, read codes. If there was a, a light on originally, you would be able to look at that. You can erase the codes um, by option 3. We just skip live data for a minute. Freeze frame. If you click on that, um, what will happen is you will be able to see uh, different data readings on what speed you were doing, what was the engine RPM, uh, your uh, short term fuel trim, your long term fuel trim at that specific moment that that light was tripped. And we got a few other tests down here as well, but let's go back up here to live data. Okay. We'll just do a complete list for now. Number of, of uh, codes, zero, so we have no uh, uh, problems at the moment. Uh, fuel system um, is in closed loop, which the CL stands for. We don't have a fuel system to calculate load. Here's the temperature of the engine, 44 degrees centigrade. I'm just out of starting up the car, so it is fairly cool at the moment. Short term fuel trim, um, four point minus uh, five. Long term minus three, so we're not too bad. We're not too bad at the moment. Engine RPM uh, over one thousand RPM, but it's still cold at the moment, so we just have to wait till the. Uh, engine warms up. Vehicle speed sensor. Just, I see a lot of dash in there. There's your um, your airflow rate from your mass airflow sensor um, and that's uh, 3 grams per second now at the moment but that will change um, at 800 rpm I think it goes down to about 2 grams per second and as you see it's on the way down already as the engine speed decreases as it warms up. Absolute throttle position. I can rev it up and you can see that's changing. It goes up and down. Location of oxygen sensors. I don't know why that is there because it doesn't seem to do anything. And here we are, here's what we have now. Uh, there's your oxygen sensor, one. Okay, we got a few more cells. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just do a custom set, a uh, custom list, go down here, number two. I backed out the uh, full list of live data and uh, I'm now just gonna go into the custom list. I'm going to select a few options now for the, uh, the customise my list that I want to look at. Let's just go 
short term fuel trim, long term fuel trim, engine RPM, we'll do engine RPM as well. Mass airflow sensor, grams per second. I want to get, um, yes, here we are. O2 sensor output voltage, um, bank one, sensor one. We'll do that as well. Now we'll select them uh, hits. Now, um, as you can see there, the top on the short term fuel trim is, uh, uh, it's hovering about zero. To minus three, and the short term fuel is minus three as well. My RPMs come down, and um, my temperature, my uh, engine is still uh, fairly cool at the moment. So these t uh, reasons will change. Okay, what I want to show you here is there's my O2 sensor output voltage, and what you can do, you have the option on this to do graphs, graphics of these. Press that, and as you can see now, we have a, a reading here of voltage. Now it's saying 0.6 of the volts down to 0 0.06. Now we all know that the oxygen sensor has to go from uh, at least 0.2 of a volt to 0.8 of a volt. But uh, let's see, we just rev the engine up to about 2,000 uh, RPM. It's in 0 0.77, but uh, I find using the oscilloscope is always a better way of uh, reading the sensor. But I've still got to get the uh, catalyte converter and the uh, uh, O2 sensor heated up. So I'm just going to rise the temperature a bit. See it there went up to 0.8 there once. It, the scan tool just is not quick enough to pick up the, uh, the change. I can see it changed up here at the top uh, to 0.8 or a volt. An oscilloscope would pick that up. Now I'm just going to let it die down to our uh, idle speed. Now you can do different, you can compare uh, different sensors as well. If you can look there, there's our short term fuel trim. Long term fuel trim. So you could select uh, two, two, two different uh, graphs. So I'm going to just go OK to that and uh, let's go up to another one. Okay, I've selected two graphs. Okay, get back over there. We have then the facility here to save it. By pressing this button below the save button, uh, uh, if I press save, and you'll see up here at the top the frames that it's saving at the moment, and I'm just going to let that uh, do a bit of saving there. Okay, I'm just going to go. Okay, we got about 50 frames. I'm just going to stop it. Now, however, I did find it a, a bit of a, a glitch with this. Let's see what it uh, do another save. This is the glitch. I uh, once you do one save on the vehicle, it won't allow you to do a second one. Um, you can disconnect the scan tool and start again, and it will actually uh, uh, save another file as well for you to look at. So, right, let's just get up with that. And go back to our complete list. Now, engine is warming up a bit. Engine coolant level uh, 72 degrees centigrade. Uh, 
term tr fuel trim that changes up and down let's just give it a graphic and see it uh, actually moving back and forth okay that's the text and let's have a look at the long term Long term is at minus uh, uh, 3.1, which is uh, as long as it's uh, not around the 10% or more than 10%, you, you should be okay. RPM is now at 800 RPM. Speed sensor, ignition advance, intake air temperature 20 degrees centigrade. Hmm. Right. Airflow from the mass airflow fl flow sensor is at roughly about two grams per second. And this is our sensor two. Let's go in here. Doesn't move very far. Whether that's a problem with the O2 sensor on the car here at one, but there has been a new O2 sensor actually put in there. Um, Whether it's a problem with the uh, the Nissan software, uh, I don't know at the moment. Uh, but with the oscilloscope, it does show movement uh, on the downstream O2. Using, uh, I also use another scan tool, uh, and it shows movement on it. But it only shows you movement when you uh, accelerate or you know you do big changes in your your RPM. And you see there, uh, OBD requirements to which vehicle is designed, and it says EOBD, which is the European On Board Diagnostics. Distance travelled, while well, it'll actually tell you how uh, far the vehicle has travelled with the, uh, the warning light on. Number of diagnostic trouble codes, zero. A few system status. Okay, let's get out of there. And let's go back to this playback option. Press the OK button. Yeah, here you are. Here's a few uh, captures, and so I'm going to just press the OK on this one. That's one I've done already. Let's see, can we get that? See this one? No. Okay, here we are. And you see, that was the first capture I did. Uh, okay, it was just uh, you can advance through your your uh, frames. You see frame 1 of 222 and there's a button beneath the next frame just click that and it will step you through the frames and you can look at them now it does say you have a print option here and the instruction book tells you you connect the USB cable to your uh, 
computer and then just press the print but I have yet to figure out how that works um, I will keep at that to see can I get it to work ok I'll escape out of that now there is other options here uh, for vehicles um, electronic parking brake and there's a, a few models in here there's our uh, models covered uh, so far um, the latest updates I'm, I'm sure others will be added as uh, Autel update their system uh, and um, you got your oil reset uh, as well here and let's just go into Asian and these are the models I've covered and uh, it looks like uh, they're very early versions version 1 over here Mazda's version 2 so obviously they've had these a while escape we just go into the manufacturer specific uh, scanner now Here, scan we are in a Nissan so we go to the Asian go down use your down arrow go to the right now if you notice here that is version uh, Nissan version 2.10 and the latest version on the download when I was doing the update was version 2.20 I had to delete 2.20 and install 2.10 to uh, connect to this vehicle ok I'm going to press the ok button processing data there's two ways you can do this you can do an auto scan we just do the auto scan first and this will scan for any modules that you would have in the car engine no fault with the engine now we're going into ABS no fault here airbag Uh, this uh, tool doesn't have uh, actuation or uh, two-way control, bidirectional. Uh, you can't operate, um, uh, say, your EGR valve or, or your idle air control valve. Um, it just reads from the uh, modules. It doesn't write or change the information. Um, but all in all, not a bad tool. And we've just got the, the four modules in this Nissan Almira the engine, the ABS, the uh, smart entrance, uh, and uh, your rear bike. Okay, let's just go into engine. And like the EOBD uh, uh, scanning, you got the option to read codes, erase codes. Um, we know there's no codes because it would have told us when it was scanning there was a code. Live data, we just go into that. Live data. And we just go to the main signals. You have the option there for custom signals as well. And in here it gives you an awful lot of uh, stuff that you, uh, you have already. Uh, coolant temperature, uh, vehicle speed, um, battery voltage. Uh, we didn't have that in the... Uh, and here's our, um, uh, our voltage on our um, O2 sensor upstream. Um, now here's your mass airflow sensor voltage, not the uh, uh, grams per second. Uh, you go in here, press graph. Just going to give a little rev to, to change the scaling. And if I 
give that a quick rev now. Let's see that rising. Okay. The graphics are very handy. Injector pulse. Um, you can graph that as well. Uh, that uh, 1.9 uh, milliseconds. Not too sure what this is. I'm going to have to check up this B fuel CH SCHDL. Uh, not too sure what that is. The load signal. That's um, if you have um, put your lights on. I think. Watch it. Yeah. If you put a load, uh, electrical load on the engine, that should change. What it does is it's. Uh, um, it's speeding up the engine a bit. I switch the lights off and that changes to off. Air conditioner, we don't have air conditioning in this car. Power switch signal, if I turn the steering wheel, you, you see that goes on and off. So that's checking the power, that's one way of checking the power switch. Or the, uh, the actual pressure switch on the uh, power steering that um, brings the idle speed of the engine up um, and this is something now I didn't even know I had on this because it's a manual drive and there's a part neutral position switch it's on now at the moment and if I put in the gear it changes to the off position Start signal, that's just start and motor. Close throttle position. There is a switch on your accelerator uh, uh, pedal. Now if I just slightly accelerate a little bit, it opens and closes. Yeah. Air conditioner relay, don't have. Fuel pump relay on. Uh, you would be able to look at that uh, if you just switch, uh, have your uh, ignition off and just switch it on, you, the fuel pump would prime for a second. You would see that change from off to on and then off again. At least you know your, your uh, computer is trying to tell the fuel pump to work. Coolant fan. Um, it's in the off position at the moment, but as soon as the um, coolant fan starts working, you'll see that change to on. Handy if you wanted to know um, is your computer telling it to go on or not. Um, O2 sensor, bank one, heater. It's on, it's turned on at the moment. So, uh, O2 uh, sensor, the downstream O2 sensor, heater, is actually off. I must look into this. Coolant temperature sensor. 89 degrees vehicle speeds now we're back up there okay let's just get back out okay another way you can uh, go into the uh, different modules is just by Selecting control unit, but you would have to know which modules are active in your car. Okay, we just done engine anyway. I will just go down here to airbag. Okay. Press the OK button just to go by that. And as you see, you don't have any live data on this or anything like that. You can either read codes or erase codes. Um, you might be in certain vehicles be able to tell. I was in uh, in Opel and it gave an awful lot more information than this. Uh, there was a lot of live data in there. It even gave you the resistance values of the uh, airbags, uh, which is handy because uh, you should have about 2.2 ohms 
on each airbag and uh, your ABS or so your airbag module is looking at this um, to make sure that your airbags are connected to the system so they can deploy and if they're not connected if their ohms value changes it, uh, the airbag light will come on on your uh, car okay let's go to the ABS and all I have on this is read codes and erase codes and no live data and when I had uh, this originally out of the box and the system software not talking about the uh, manufacturer software the system the Autel system software was version 3.0 uh, I can't remember what the Nissan version was in uh, it originally and um, I should have looked and I should have done a backup copy of the SD card so uh, I would have it, uh, all this um, enabled I would actually get a couple of cards and I would put uh, I would uh, have one main uh, SD card and then I would have a couple of other SD cards with different versions of uh, manufacturer software on it as well just to, to be able to get around uh, compatibility issues that uh, scanners in general have um, there is an awful lot more live data on the CAN systems um, this is not a CAN doesn't have a CAN system um, it's fairly slow data update it's um, the protocol uh, ISO 91 I can't remember it uh, offhand now at the moment but uh, the the uh, control controller area network the new system uh, out there in the cars uh, is pretty quick and it's got a lot of live data and uh, um, even with uh, this Nissan before I done the update um, on the APS I could check my vehicle wheel sensors um, I could check up the wheels of the car and spin the wheels and I could see the uh, uh, live data on each wheel as it turned I could graph it and you could see it going from 0 volts to 5 volts um, I'm not too sure it was 0, so 0 volts to 5 volts or 12 volts um, but it did change uh, uh, a square wave as the wheel was spinning um, but since I, uh, I'd done the update, I lost all that. Um, I'm in contact with Hotel at the moment. Um, they, I've described the problem, but as yet, I, they don't have an answer. Um, let's see what else we have. Okay, we're not going to empty. Control unit, let's go back out. Escape, first escape. Um, let's go ahead and have a look at the European uh, models of covers. Um, it's got a lot in there. Um, Benz, BMW, Bentley, Bugatti, Citroen, um, Alpha, Audi, uh, Ford, Fiat, Jaguar, Lancia, Land Rover, Mini, Opel, Peugeot. Or Persia. I'm not going to name them all. Uh, Renault, Skoda, Volkswagen, Vauxhall, Smart, uh, Smart, um, Smart car. That must be is it? Sprinters. That's a Mercedes Sprinter uh, and a Volvo. Let's go over here to the USA models. Chrysler and Ford. Um, I would also have a uh, GM over here on the right hand side only for I did not have enough room on my SD card with the 4 gig hard drive um, I have a, an 8 gig uh, uh, sorry I should say not hard drive but SD card um, I have an 8 gig SD card ordered and I will put the full um, uh, list or full uh, list of manufacturers onto us I'm only missing one but uh, I can imagine as we get uh, more and more updates uh, this is going to come uh, very uh, 
memory hungry so um, I don't think a 4 gig would be adequate uh, at least 8 gig is what you need so if you get a 4 gig card get yourself a, an 8 gig and copy the contents of your 4 gig card onto your 8 gig card and uh, stick it in your unit make sure you do a backup first of your, your original uh, software um, it's, it's a copy and paste it does it takes a while because the the um, there's a lot of data um, on the card um, just going to go out with this and let's see your electronic parking brake um, uh, your setup um, you can change it to either metric or English I have it set to metric obviously um, beep you can switch off the beep if you if you don't want it um, your language you can select your language your, um, and your LCD test and here in the about you will get your serial number and all your information about your your uh, scanner it will give you the current software you have installed your, your firmware your hardware um, and also your serial number of the unit and the password that you would need for the Autel update um, uh, website you would need that too when you're registering I'm just going to visit the uh, printing from the scan tool um, if you remember when we were in the um, live uh, data um, I was uh, saving the data to the scan tool when you go back to play it back it does give you the option to print out the data and at the time I couldn't uh, print the data it wouldn't do anything but um, I'm just going to go through that uh, now you have to have your scan tool connected to the PC which are USB unit has started up now and um, what you have to do is um, go onto your laptop and uh, when I installed the uh, uh, update um, application on the laptop it also installed uh, another application alongside it and I'm just going to give you a shot of that okay this is the update application and up here it also installed this odd help printer so it can be seen and if you click on that you will get this and it will tell you no scan tool is connected but let me see if we get the two of them in the shot move this over and Okay, if I go over here now to playback, you can hear the uh, scanner connecting. Now I can select my data. Let's see, can we find something with some information in it? Sound good. And here we are. Now if I just click on the button underneath print, you can see it. I'm storing all the data on the screen there. And it tells you print success. What I do with this then is that I want to save this um, uh, what I normally do is I have a thing called bullzip printer in here which really creates a PDF document out of it um, that's one way you can do it and let's see you click print and it 
access me to where do I want to store it then you can select where you want to store it um, but here I give it a two click save and then what happened is now that has converted that into a, a PDF document so you have it stored there you can then save that document as uh, well it's already stored um, as test 2 and that's all the frames all the way down to 222 okay close it off now let's see what happens here with the copy copy I wonder and paste So you can copy and paste it into a normal Word document by the looks of that. Um, don't say no. Let's see about a spreadsheet. What happened? So it does give you, it's copied in there as well. Whether it can make sense of the data or not is another thing. Um, let's, let's see what the edit does. What can we change here? I suppose you can put in other information yourself there. Um, Like if a fault occurred, if uh, you L T, you can put a, something that will make it stand out. So if you're reading through the document, yeah, you'll be able to. Uh, it would be able to catch your eye. Okay. Don't say that. Let's go next it out that. To end this video, um, I would just like to add, um, it's been an easy tool to use, um, lots of information um, that you can uh, get access to in the live data, um, even though I was using it on a Nissan Almira, um, which was having a few problems with the Nissan software. Um, but I have since gone on to um, other cars, Volkswagen, uh, Renault, Peugeot, and I've had no uh, problems uh, uh, connecting to them and reading live data. There is a vast amount of information on this tool. It's well worth the, uh, the money uh, that uh, is paid out for it. Um, also what is handy is the uh, website update um, means I mean when they get new uh, information they can give it to you and you can get it on your tool as well um, and I hope it's been somehow there to someone out there that's thinking of purchasing one of these uh, tools and um, uh, thanks for watching